What's going on, swim fans? Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. And in today's episode, I'm sharing with you how to swim butterfly with perfect technique. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what some of the core elements of butterfly stroke mechanics are, how you can swim faster, and whether you're just learning the stroke or you're trying to master the 200 butterfly, by the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you some drills and resources so you can master the butterfly stroke. Now, the butterfly is often considered one of the most difficult strokes to master. It can be complex, it might take a lot of energy, and you feel like you're, you have a piano that just fell on your back if you swim anything more than a couple of strokes. Now, while this can be true, my goal in this video is to share with you how to swim butterfly fast, with as little effort as possible. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ferris Abedi. I'm the co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro, and we help swimmers all over the world improve their performance and health both in and out of the water. So if you're looking to take your swimming to the next level and swim faster and smarter than ever before, you've come to the right place. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let me know in the comments what you guys think about Butterfly. Let's get right into it. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna break down why is Butterfly so special? Why is Butterfly sometimes so difficult and so painful to swim. Well, there's a few things that make fly unique, that make it special. And I have three reasons. The first one is that it's a short axis stroke. So in a lot of ways, butterfly and breaststroke, our short axis strokes, are very similar to each other. We have freestyle and backstroke, which are long axis strokes. If you think about your spine, and you have a line, a laser that goes right down the middle of your body. In backstroke and freestyle, you rotate upon that axis. And in breaststroke and butterfly, it's a short axis stroke. So you're kind of bobbing up and down a little bit. So it's a little bit different in terms of the mechanics and what you need to swim fast and what do you need to do to be efficient in that stroke. So it also requires a total body coordination. Butterfly, unlike some of the other strokes, you really have to have the timing down. It's your total body, it's your core, it's your hips, it's your arms, it's the recovery. And in this video, we're gonna break down how you do each of those, the pull, the kick, the breathing, all that stuff. But in freestyle, for example, you can be flat and you can just let your legs drag and you can swim pretty fast actually for a pretty long period of time. That's not gonna work in butterfly. And the third reason that makes butterfly so special is that you need some kind of baseline strength just to do the stroke correctly. You know, butterfly is not the first stroke that you learn. In fact, it wasn't even an Olympic event until the 1950s, I believe 1956. So because butterfly is new and evolving, it definitely is not the easiest thing to pick up. So I definitely recommend starting with freestyle if you're a beginner. Start with the front crawl and then build your strength up in the water. And with the right mechanics, you can really leverage the strength that you do have. So you don't have to be, you know, a muscular, like incredible Hulk, but you gotta be enough, you have to have enough strength in the water so that you can move yourself forward and apply the right mechanics. Now, if we break apart the stroke into six core elements that are really important, we've got body position. This is the most important piece of any stroke, actually. This applies for everything. When we're talking about body position, that's pretty much how you sit in the water. Not how you sit, how you float, how you move through the water. And our body is actually broken up into two pieces. So we've got the upper part of the body, which is your head position, because if you look up, you know your hips are gonna sink. This applies in all the strokes. And then you have hip position. And when you think about butterfly swimming, you always wanna be moving forward. Oftentimes swimmers get confused and they think, you know, butterfly is like a dolphin, right? You know, you think about a dolphin diving up and down through the water. And so often, you know, this is exhibit A, you have this dolphin motion moving up and down through the water. It's like a sine curve. It's very, very smooth. And that's actually not what you want. The reality is it's more like exhibit B. You're actually moving up. You tilt your head up to take the breath, but you never really want to be diving back down because what happens when you dive back down? You create a lot of resistance. The water is 800 times more resistive than air. So it's your mission, if you want to swim faster, is to reduce your resistance, which means you need to be spending as much time with as much of your body over the water as possible, and you want to minimize the resistance of your lower body that's going to be dragging behind you. So when you dive up and down, you're actually causing more resistance. And if you look at the best swimmers in the world, they actually swim relatively flat. Some swimmers, they look maybe up and down dolphin motion, but the reality is they're actually moving relatively flat. And the more forward moving you can make your body, the more efficient you're gonna be. Now keep that in mind as we talk about some of these other elements. Element number two is the pull. Now let's break it down for you. The way your hands enter the water is just outside your shoulders. You have a clock, you know, think 11 and one, and you wanna have your hands nice and flat on the entry, clean entry. You don't wanna hit the water with your thumbs. You don't wanna, you wanna actually, if anything, think about curving your pinkies in, so that way you hit the water flat. And once your hands have a graceful entry with minimal splash at the front of the stroke, you wanna engage the catch. That's 
phase two. And it's just like a freestyle pull. You wanna have an early vertical forearm. You wanna catch the water and think about from your elbow all the way down through your finger. It's all one big paddle. Very similar to two freestyle pulls happening at the same time. Obviously the mechanics are different because in freestyle it's a long axis stroke. So you're rotating. And so as a result in freestyle, when you have your hand enter the water, you're rotating and you're using your hip rotational drive to catch. In butterfly, it's a little bit more power oriented. So you're gonna have two arms pulling at the same time with the high elbow, early vertical forearm. Now, of course, in butterfly, your hand entry at this point is gonna be a little bit wider than your shoulders. And as you pull down, your hands are gonna get closer to each other just the physics and the mechanics of having your elbows bent and pulling the water. It does not mean we pull with an S shape. Sometimes you'll see swimmers, especially on older videos, a little bit more old school way to swim. You kind of make an S shape. You don't, you don't want to do that. You want to be pulling like two freestyle strokes. Your hands naturally with the elbow bend are going to come a little bit closer to each other as you finish. And as you finish, your hands are entering past your hips. It's really important to power through at the end of the stroke. And then on the recovery, you wanna think of your hands angel hands. You want your fingertips to float. Your thumbs should be floating just outside on top of the surface of the water. And you wanna float gracefully back to the hand entry position. Now this is really important with the pull. This is to simplify everything I just said. There's two parts of it. There's the power phase, which is the pull. You wanna be as explosive and powerful as possible as soon as you initiate the catch. That's powerful and that's fast once you grab the water. And then once your hands exit, you wanna be slow and controlled over the water. As you take that breath and you're lowering your head back down, you want your hands to just gracefully, angel hands float back to the recovery, uh, back to the entry position. So remember that angel hands, pull phase is power underwater, and then the recovery is relax. Let's talk about the kick. Now the kick is often misunderstood in butterfly. Your feet are together. This is the dolphin kick we're talking about. Your toes are pointed. And there's two kicks for every single arm stroke. Now, here's the thing. Both kicks should actually be as similar in power and size to each other as possible. It's not like one massive kick and then one floating kick. The most efficient butterfly swimmers have two strong kicks and they're matched together with one arm stroke. You also have to remember that each dolphin kick actually has two components. You have the up kick and you have the down kick. If you think about kicking a soccer ball, you have a lot more power kicking your leg forward. That's just the way the human physiology is built. Similarly in dolphin kick and freestyle kick, the, that part of your kick is much more powerful. If you think about trying to kick a soccer ball behind you, if you're you know, Ronaldo or something, you can kick the ball probably really well. For most people, you're gonna have a lot of time. Your coordination is not gonna be as good and your overall power is just not gonna be there because your body's not built to produce force and power in that direction. Similarly with your kick. So the up kick is part of you know, the, those two phases of the kick. All that to say, it's really important that you think about in your kick and developing that kick, kicking in both directions and setting up the up kick so that way you can have a powerful down kick. And that applies to both the first kick and the second kick of the butterfly stroke. We'll talk about that in just a little bit when we talk about underwaters. Now, the other thing is, yes, they're equal in size. Don't think that one kick is way bigger than the other. One will be bigger, but they should both be as try as possible to make them equal. Now the breathing, ah, breathing in butterfly. This is, this is a challenging one for a lot of people. You wanna think about tilting your head forward. You want your chin just scratching the surface of the water and lifting your head just enough to get your breath. And once you've got your breath, you're gonna tilt it back down. You do not wanna lift your head up because remember what we talked about with the sine curve here. You do not actually wanna go up and down, up and down. You wanna think instead about tilting your head not lifting it, breathing after the catch because you don't want to rush the breath too early. And remember, the power phase of the pull is underwater. That's when you're grabbing your breath. And then as you recover and your arms are relaxed, that's when you lower your head down. A really important component of this is your tempo. In butterfly, you have to maintain tempo. If you see a swimmer falling apart in a race, it's because the, the, the tempo is just not there and everything is just falling apart. If you lose the tempo and you don't train correctly, we'll talk about training, then it's all just gonna fall apart. And also keep in mind that breathing can slow down your tempo. That's why tempos are different in the 100 and the 200. The 100 is faster, it's a little bit more powerful, faster tempo. And as a result, there's less breathing going on. Uh, you can look at a swimmer like a Michael Phelps who's taking a breath every single stroke. And when you're just getting started, you may need to breathe every single stroke. As you get more comfortable, if you swim in short course specifically in 25 meter or 25 yard pool, you probably won't need to breathe every single stroke and you can get into a better rhythm and you can really work on the mechanics.
Now let's talk about underwater. So this is a really important component if you're a competition swimmer. If you're trying to get into you know, top speed, underwaters refer to when you push off the wall or off the start and you're in a streamlined position. It is the fifth stroke. It is faster than swimming on top of the water. So you wanna leverage this. And when we talk about the kick and you're in a streamlined position, you're kicking in both directions. You're using your entire body. You do not wanna bend your knees too much. You should really be making the action happen with your hips, with your glutes, with your lower back, with your hamstrings, really engaging all of the musculature in your body. Because in that case, yes, you want to look like this sine curve with a little bit less hand movement at the top. But from your chest down, you want to be rolling underneath the water. And that if you can develop that skill, it'll actually apply to all the strokes when you push off the wall, but especially when you swim on top of the water into the actual stroke. Now training, this is there's three main elements in how you really master butterfly. And this is really more a psychology and approach and how you should actually incorporate butterfly training correctly. And I would say breaststroke is very similar to what we're about to talk about. There's three components. Number one is specificity. Number two is progression. And number three is technique. I'm gonna go into each of these just a little bit. Specificity means training either each component of the stroke on its own. So we're specifically training the kick. We're specifically training the breathing. We're specifically training, you know, the power, the tempo. We're breaking apart the stroke so we can focus on one piece or the specificity could be implied with a certain distance. So you're trying to be good at the 100 meter butterfly or the 200 meter butterfly or the 50 meter butterfly, for example. And so you're trying to do things in training that replicate what you want to do in a race and or with perfect technique. Number two is the progression. So if we break apart the stroke and we're focusing on one component, you're only focusing on that component for a 25. And you have to really work on that and refine it before you can amplify that to a 50, to a 75, to a 100. And if you're doing it in a race, same thing. If you're trying to hold race pace, you might only be able to do proper technique for 50 meters, for 100 meters, for 200 meters. So it's okay to break things down. So that way you build a progression and week by week, workout by workout, you build the endurance, the neuromuscular connection so you can actually apply the right technique and the power and all these things together over a period of time. And thirdly, I mentioned it, it's technique. None of this really matters if you're not swimming with the proper technique. So we've all been there, whether it's freestyle or butterfly or any other stroke, where you're swimming, you start to fatigue in a workout and you're just trying to push through. Uh, that is the worst thing you can do in butterfly and breaststroke specifically. Powering through is just gonna make your top potential speed uh, less significant. So if you're really trying to go for that performance and you're trying to get faster in butterfly, it's not gonna work. You're gonna just train your body to swim slow so when you go to a race, you're not gonna be at that peak performance. You always wanna have proper technique. And when it comes to actually building sets, this is not about doing 200 flies on repeat. If we look at Michael Phelps, the greatest butterflyer of all time, uh, you know, his records in the 100 and 200 have recently been broken, world records. It doesn't change the fact that he is really the legend of butterfly. You know, he's competed in what, five Olympic games in the 200 butterfly. And if you look at his training sessions, what he did with Bob Bowman, I've had the fortune to hear him lecture about this specifically. He's not training 200s butterfly on repeat. He is the best 200 butterfly in the world because he trains the most at race pace. It doesn't mean he's doing USRPT specifically, but he is training instead of six 200s, for example, he's doing 12 100s where every other 50 in that series is holding 200 pace with the exact time and the number of strokes, the number of dolphin kicks off the wall. It's all comes back to specificity and he's building a progression. You can't just show up and hold world record pace in the 200 butterfly in a set like that. And he has crystal clear technique all the way through. Now here's a few drills that you can apply some of this. So you know you might be thinking to yourself, how do I actually take this and how do I get better at swimming? I'm trying to get better here. What are some practical things that I can do? I have three awesome drills and a few variants of those. The first drill is kicking on all four planes of your body. What that means is on your front, on your back, on your left, and on your right. Remember, the dolphin kick, we're breaking it apart, we're specifically training the kick and the body roll here. We're focusing on engaging both the up kick and the down kick. Remember, you kick in both directions. You wanna engage on the front side, it's your core, it's your hip flexors, it's your quads, and then on the back side, it's your lower back, it's your hamstrings, it's your glutes, and you're trying to push the water in both directions. You kinda wanna feel like a worm. You wanna look like this from an eagle eye perspective on top of the water when you're kicking on your side. Kicking in all four planes really develops that musculature and that feel of the water with your body, with your core, with your diaphragm, and through your legs, 
not just your feel of the water with your hands. I also like the Superman drill where you push off the wall and your hands are not in streamline, they're separated and you're really trying to feel the connection with the water, starting with your fingertips and your dolphin kicking through the water like that. That's a great drill. The second drill is single arm butterfly. Now I love this drill, there's two versions of it. The first one is where you focus on breathing forward. This is really good for timing the breath. This is how you learn when to take the breath. So you take your one arm stroke and your chin's gonna be right on top of the surface, you're looking forward, and that's a great way to learn when you should be taking the breath and when you should be dropping your head, get your hips back up. The second version is where you actually breathe to the side and you wanna keep your eyes like a freestyle breath as low to the water as possible. You don't wanna lift your head up. And this is really learning how to press your chest forward. Remember, we're not pressing the chest down necessarily, we're pressing the chest forward. And when you don't lift your head up as much, you get out of this up and down pattern and you can be a lot flatter in that motion. And it really teaches you how to press your chest forward. Now the third drill that I really like, and this is a little bit more advanced, so you gotta have a little bit more power here. It's freestyle kick with butterfly arms. So butterfly pull, freestyle kick, really powerful right here. This flattens your stroke out a lot, and it really allows you to feel the power underneath on the pull phase, and then the relaxed arms on the recovery. So this is a great skill if you're a little bit more advanced and you're looking for mastering that timing of pulling with power underneath the water and then having a relaxed angel arms on top of the water. That's a great one. Uh, for all of these drills and when you're swimming butterfly, feel free to use fins. I highly recommend the shorter fins if you're working on the stroke. If you wanna work on the underwaters, you know that's where longer fins or a mono fin or something like that. We'll put some links in the description that you can check out some great equipment. Uh, also, if you guys are looking for a community of people who are looking to swim faster and smarter than ever before, make sure you join our Facebook group. We have thousands of swimmers from over 100 different countries, some beginners thrown in there, some triathletes, some former Olympians, current you know, world record holders. We've got everyone in that group and it's amazing to see these stories and share your own. So we look forward to seeing you in that Facebook group. We'll link it in the description. If you guys are looking for a specific training program, whether it's in the water or out of the water, dry land training specific to swimming to help you improve not only your performance, but also your health and be fit. Make sure you check out the My Swim Pro app available for iPhone and Android. We'll link it all in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this Whiteboard Wednesday on how to swim butterfly with perfect technique. Let me know what you think in the comments. Until next time, happy swimming.